Last time on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. And I came across this and I thought, ooh, I better get that. I'm going to spray paint these parts. So I will need to secure them to the cardboard so that they don't blow away as soon as I start spray painting. Then this should go into the interior and look quite nice. Actually, you know what? If you just put your finger and thumb there and just bend this pipe over a bit. Now I've got the body all prepped up and cleaned and taped to this old pop can. And now on to the show. Here's the wheels after I painted them with some John Deere green. And these are sitting outside so you can get the full color spectrum of how they're going to look. I'm going to put the front and rear wheels into their tires. And normally I would paint the raised letters first with some white paint, like the Goodyear here. But I think if I'm going to be pushing these wheels into the tires, I might be affecting the lettering if I paint it on first. So what I'll do is I will put the wheel into the tire, going from sort of the back, dropping into the front, and then turning it over and stretching the tire up and over the rim. If I can do that. <laughs> Here we go. There it is. Now I will have to paint the back a little bit with some semi-gloss black because the green oversprayed all over it, as you can see there. But basically, there is the front wheel. And now, carefully, with a small brush, I can white letter the Goodyear on here, being careful not to hit the green rim. And now that this is assembled, I won't be handling it and pushing my fingers in on those white letters and possibly damaging them or at least dirtying them up with my fingerprints. Here's our completed set of racing wheels and tires, and I'm going to hold off on the details like the white lettering and painting the bolts and the grease caps on the front wheels until I've actually assembled them and placed them into the chassis for the same reason as I didn't put the white lettering on, so that I can assemble these wheels on here without risking getting uh, damage to the wheels and tires in the fine detail rubbing that off with my thumbprint or something like that. And uh, it also gives me something to hold on to while I do this, which is essentially the chassis pan itself. So that will help steady my hand for doing all that nice detail work. Now that the paint on the wheels have dried and I've put them into the tires, I can begin to assemble the chassis and get that ready for our NASCAR. Here's the NASCAR chassis after I finish putting in those pipes. Now you remember before where I was showing the stock factory pipes and I said to chop them off about here and then put on the dumps? Well, that's what I've done. However, I did notice this is a little bit strange in here as one dump is coming out a little further back than the other. And the way these are attached in here, you can see one kind of curves close to the transmission tunnel and the other is pretty much right over top. And yet at the ends, they're the same distance. I didn't get them into the uh, rocker panels on the sides. So again, it, it is a little bit odd. These were supposed to be headers that came straight out along here. And then the dumps would be sticking out further on the car. But, you know, as I showed, those chrome exhaust pipes were actually for the drag racer version. So this is what I have from using the high performance manifolds and a little combination of the stock pipes as well as the dumps coming off the end. Now out back, if you look right in here, you'll see these funny red ends. These are your rear brake coolers. And there is this bar over here too. Now the bar does have a pin on it and you can see it's sort of got this uh, spring arrangement or whatever that sticks up over top. Now, I haven't really actually seen anything like that in real life. I don't know if this is supposed to push down and be right into the differential, or if it is just a little bar. So I kind of just went with what was there. But overall, I think it's not too bad. Now, I keep talking about white lettering the wheels. I haven't actually done that yet, because I've also got to put this in the body. And then I thought, well, maybe I might get in trouble doing that. But I did add in the uh, little grease cap there, as well as the six lug nuts. Painted those with the steel when I had the exhaust pipes, and uh, I thought that was a good time to do that. The only uh, thing that's kind of odd is you can see in the center, oh, in the center of the tire, 
See, that's how durable this is. It can flip over, take a beating, and keep on ticking. <laughs> anyway, take a licking, keep on ticking. But you can see it's uh, shiny right in the center of that tire. That's because I couldn't sand it down all the way, but uh, I had to take what I got. Overall, though, I am quite impressed with this. And the pipes are up so high that this can actually roll without hitting them. Here I have the factory stock undercarriage on the top and our NASCAR modified undercarriage on the bottom. And you can see the differences right away. You have the factory stock engine and here you have the high performance engine with the sump pump underneath. And there's our exhaust pipes coming out and here they go all the way back into the mufflers and the tailpipes. Whereas on our NASCAR they just go into the dumps. And then we have the oil or the air brake coolers on the back, but over here there is nothing. But overall, though, you can see how well the chassis look in the different configurations. Here's a dashboard for our Cobra kit, and I did try to paint the gauges in, but my eyesight is not what it used to be, so some of these may look kind of terrible. I'm not too sure, but I did make that attempt, and I left that little insert panel with the uh, satin black as well. All I need to do is clean up in here and then glue the steering wheel in. Here we have our finished NASCAR interior and you can see just how cool this now looks with the dashboard and I added in a little red onto the gear shift lever. Little red ball right there. You can see the great uh, roll cage and frame and even the seat. Sort of has a Star Wars look to it in the black and white. Sort of like a stormtrooper or something. Now I did tilt the dashboard up just a bit so that the uh, steering wheel is not sitting right on the edge of the bottom of the seat down here. But overall, again, you can see just how nice it is with the cool looking roll bar and the dashboard and the gear shift lever as well. And comparing the interiors, we have the stock interior up front and you can see the stock dashboard, stock steering wheel, center console, and the two bucket seats, as well as the rear bench seat. And it's quite the contrast compared to the racing version, where all these seats, except for the driver's seat, are removed. And we also have the center console in here with the chrome gear shift lever going straight into the console down below. There is no T-handle like in the stock version. We also have our safety steering wheel, which is padded around the steering wheel ring and the horn button. And we also have the upgraded dashboard. This is just a simple flat welded panel style dashboard for racing, which is lighter than the factory version and also has the racing gauges all inside. The door panels would be basically removed. The upholstery part of the door panels would be removed from the stock version into the NASCAR version, but because this kit isn't really designed like that, I just left the inside all painted white as if it was steel and then was painted white as opposed to the upholstered interior over here. Now a guy like Pete would add in the armrests and the window winders and the door handles to get in and out, as well as winders for the back window that would go up and down, which is really cool, but I did not get into that in this kit. Although a person can with some sheet styrene quite easily. Uh, I'm sure Pete will make a video, so watch out for that one. But over here, you do have the NASCAR, and it's almost like with the upholstery pattern, it's like there's little raised bars that are going across. So I guess that would work for um, maybe some kind of uh, reinforced uh, stainless ribbing or something they might have put in there. Who knows? But at any rate, I like how both of these look once they're all built up. How about you? Let me know in the comments below which is your favorite, the factory stock or the racing version. Now I think we have pretty much everything ready to go with the undercarriages done as well as our interiors here. So that leaves basically the bodies. So let's see what it looks like when we start with the NASCAR. Here's our NASCAR body after the first coat of white paint. And you can see that it does have a bit of orange peel in here. It was a hot day and I had issues with the trim clad spray can because the nozzle jammed and I had to drill the hole out while this thing was half painted. And uh, that's never a good thing. 
Now we'll take a look at our painted body in a little more detail, and one thing that I noticed is when I was painting this actually, something flew right on the body, because I was painting this outside, landed right on the roof right in here. It's like a raised little speck of dirt or something, and it's really annoying. The other thing was, I've got a lot of orange peel in this, especially right along this side of the body. I don't know how well you can see that, but I can really see orange peel. Now, one thing I'm thinking of doing here, I was going to sand it up a bit and then apply a second coat, but I really want to get this thing done. And, uh, yeah, I know, I should be more cautious. But what I'm thinking is, this is an ass car, so or a race car anyway, so what I'm thinking is that, you know, they wouldn't have gotten it, or they might have got it out of the Ford factory in white and then start modifying it, but as they modified it and removed trim and all the rest, they might, you know, be damaging the paint, the original paint, from Ford, and they might just decide to repaint the whole thing. So what I'm thinking is just leaving the overspray in this, I know some people are going, <gasps> I'm kind of going, ah, too, but uh, remember I was saying I'm going to put on the factory or the AMT decals on the side for the street machine one, and I'll take a few pictures of what that looks like, and then afterwards I'm going to add in NASCAR numbers from another kit that aren't in this model, just to uh, get it all race car looking, you know, because there were no race car numbers or any of the sponsorship decals for the fenders or the back or anything included in this kit. It was just those stripes and the license plates and the air cleaner decal, which isn't really that accurate, for the uh, um, Cobra version. And of course, this is the Torino. So, like I'm saying, you know, they uh, built this car and they painted it in a hurry for race day. And they got overspray in here and they just went, ah, the hell with it, put on, or the heck with it, put on the uh, stripes and away we go. And the other thing I want to do is I want to actually add a two-tone in here because I was looking at some of the NASCARs of the day and these Torinos, they had a really wicked uh, two-tone and it just went on the roof. But boy, that ever... Really, it did look really great. The other thing I've got to do is paint in here the engine bay. That's all semi-gloss black. And, uh, yeah, it's going to look neat. Now, one thing, I watched Lucas C. do a video about... Uh, he was talking about the effects of spray paint and what they do to plastic models. And what he was saying is when you remove the emblems and all that sort of thing and you sand it down all nice and smooth, you th uh, would think that you would be okay, right? And then you spray paint it, and all of a sudden, all these little spots that you sanded, like the emblems and that, they all, you know, open up and they get etched because of uh, the plastic had some sort of uh, slickness to it. And then when you sanded it, you cut that open, is uh, what he was saying in his video. I only noticed that right in this little area with the three bars that were removed. However, where I removed the Cobra trim and the parking lights and whatever else I removed for the NASCAR version, I don't see anywhere where any of that etching occurred, only on that one side right in this one corner. So this is trim clad that I painted it with, and this is an enamel. And perhaps it's better than uh, Krylon. I think that's what they use in the States. I did. They do have Krylon up here in Canada. I used it once. I did not like it because it always felt tacky and it never felt like it was drying. I, I used it on a uh, Starship Enterprise underneath for the gray. And boy, it's that was like a <laughs> eight years ago or maybe a decade ago now. And it's still just... You can feel it. You can almost hear your fingerprints going into it. Whereas this is a nice, hard uh, enamel. So basically, yeah, I can't find anywhere where that etched, except that one little corner. But what I'm going to do is when I do the two-tone, I'm going to sand 
just the roof area. This time around, I'm going to brush paint the two-tone, just the two-tone area, and uh, reduce the orange peel, and that color is going to reflect in the pinstripes. Oh boy, this is really going to look cool once I get it all together. If you like this show so far, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And now, back to the show. I want to sand the little bits of junk out of the roof and sand down the sides as well and into the back because I want the entire roof to be a different color. But I still need this area here to be white. And I don't want to end up scratching that with the sandpaper and destroying the glossy finish on the white. So what I'll do is I'll take my cheap masking tape and I'll rip off a little bit and carefully the idea here is to lay it down like this so that I don't sand into the top of the fender and ruin any of that. Also I can cover up a little bit up and around here if I want but I'm only going as far as here because the posts will be all silver just like on the real car. But this is a good way to protect against any sand scratches and once I have finished sanding the roof, I'll remove this tape and then replace it with better tape for masking for painting. Here's how it looks with the masking tape installed, just to uh, protect from getting scratches down here. And what I have is my sandpaper block. This is 1500 grade sandpaper. I might go down to 600, I'm not fully sure. Just depends on how fine this is. But what I'll do is take the sandpaper and sand. So I'm, this is the cross sanding method I'll show here. So you notice that I'm going a 45 degree angle on the top of the roof. Now to cross sand you reverse and go the opposite direction for the opposite 45. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a cross hatch pattern in here. So first it was going this way and then this way. So that would be like your hashtag. Hashtag, right? And what that does is it makes it so that you're not... It, like if I go back and forward in one direction, right? I'm following the contour of this roof. So if there is a sink mark in here, that will go under the sink mark and come up. But what happens with cross sanding is you're going at an angle to everything. And so now you're sanding like this way. And if the sink is like there, you're going across it that way. And then to cross sand the other way, you're cross cutting it. So that will flatten it out. Now on here, it was a little piece of junk that got on there. But I don't know if you can see this or if it's just me. <laughs> but at any rate, now this piece of junk is actually nice and flat, just from the simple cross sanding. But it does require a bit more. Also, you can get rid of the orange peel in the paint by cross sanding. Orange peel is when you paint something and it looks like an orange peel. Now the other way to cross sand, of course, is going like this left and right and then up and down or north and south east and west instead of at the angles northeast to southwest uh you know whatever okay now that is looking better the other thing to do is to wet sand this which would be getting your sandpaper and water and then doing that because as you can see all these little white dots that is the paint plugging into the sandpaper and you don't want plugged up sandpaper. You want it all to be smooth. So using water and maybe even a bit of soap and water helps to remove those as well as keep a nice barrier up there and keep the sanding uh, power of the sandpaper, the cutting surface, nice and free of debris. So here we are after sanding, and I don't know if you can see it, but I still have a little bit of orange peel on that roof and the trunk lid. But it's not enough to uh, really affect the new paint coat that's going over the top. So now what I want to do is remove the old Duramax masking tape and replace it with frog tape. This will give me that nice fine line like it says on the package. I've used this before and it is quite nice. You just have to burnish the edges down onto your model before you start painting but once the paint is dry you can just peel it off and it gives you that nice fine edge or nice line here as opposed to the uh, broken up edge that you see here without the paint block. 
here's our model with the frog taped down and I did try to get right along that edge as best I could and now I've got my burnishing tool here you can also use a spoon if you don't have one of these but uh, you want to take that tape and just burnish it down along that edge I have gone up a little on the spoiler here that's okay the spoiler will be painted black because that's sort of what they did back then had a black spoiler up there Okay, the other thing I could do is take our Duramax tape and just tape along the edges here and cover this all up. But I would really do that if I was spray painting, because you don't want anything underneath. Or, you know, you don't want your paint to get up underneath. Or like you're painting here and it's overspraying down here or something. So you want to completely cover this up. You would also cover up your interior so when you spray paint it doesn't all shoot inside here and make a big mess. Again though, um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to brush paint from here down to there and uh, call that a day. The other thing I'm thinking of is maybe while I've got the opportunity, I'll paint inside in here, the engine bay. And uh, remember you are actually going to mask or, you know, not, not come up. Here, it's still a bit of body color underneath, but then it goes into uh, satin black down below. Here's our car after the first coat of orange paint. And I used this brush and this bottle of Tester's Orange, and I actually made two mistakes. But before I tell you what the mistakes are, I'm going to tell you the technique. So basically, I went across the roof this way, which is the short way of doing it. And in the second coat, when I come back after sanding this, I will go the long way, which is more correct. And the reason why I'm doing that is to try to hide my brush painting marks. Now, what mistakes did I make? Well, first off, I didn't strain the paint. I went right out of the bottle. And that left some little chunkies here and there, so I will have to wet sand those out once this is dry. <laughs> and the second thing I did wrong was... I thought this was gloss orange, and then when I painted it, it started to go flat. And I was thinking, why is this going flat? This doesn't make any sense. Then I uh, picked up the bottle. I took my glasses off, because again, I'm hard of seeing. Well, my vision's getting a bit worse anyway. I need new glasses. But I noticed on here, this is my flat grapefruit paint color. It's not actually orange. It's, I guess, sort of a military flat color. But the reason why I bought that is so that I could mix it with copper and get the correct color for Ford flathead engines from the 50s, which is right here. And uh, this is actually the wrong color paint. So I'm going to have to go through my collection again and find the proper tester's orange that I was looking for, the 1127. But the good news is, because I used the flat paint first, this actually works as a good primer base coat for the orange, so I'll only have to paint one coat of orange over top of this, and all the oranginess of it should mix together. And the second good thing about this being flat is it will dry quickly, quicker than the gloss orange. I could actually leave it out in the sun today for maybe an hour, and uh, that should make it rock hard. Here's our car after I brush painted on the tester's 1127 orange. You can see it's a lot nicer now. Still a little bit streaky with the brush, but I think I'll do a third coat and thin the paint down. I just basically went with the consistency from the bottle. I thought it was thin enough, but uh, apparently not. But what I will do here is I'm going to lift the tape off. Now when you do this, you want to peel back at a bit of a curve angle so that it'll cut in nice. Look at this so far. So far, so good. Okay, it might be tricky around the back end here, because the tape has rolled on itself. Ooh, okay, there's the first one. Ah, look at that nice line right there. Excellent. Now when I put a second coat on, I'll have to put new tape on. That's okay. I think another thing I might try to do is just get a black pinstripe right where the orange touches the white. Let's see what that looks like. We're tying with the spoiler being painted black. 
there it is. Look at how nice this is now. <laughs> it's going to look good with those uh, orange and green um, stripes going up the side. Again, really excellent work here. It's nice to get some color on this. That means that I'm almost finished. Like I said, I just got to paint the black in here and uh, paint the spoiler. Now I might also go in and just paint the area right here with the orange in the back. But overall, I mean, this is looking good now. I like that orange color. I like that, uh, well, just the color of it, you know, the, the, the hue. I like the hue of it. Now, just to get a little idea of what this would look like with the decals on, I've taken the decal sheet, at least one of them, and I cut the top off right along the black trim line, just so that I could do this. So that's where that decal is going to end up. Something, I think it's supposed to go underneath that line. So I'm going to have to cut a little away in here, around the wheel arch. But overall, I mean, there you go. That's sort of what it will end up looking like. So I do think that orange roof really complements there. And then with the green down below here, those wheels are also going to be green. So again, this should look really, really good. And then I can always put on, like once I get these decals down, I can always put a number right there on the door that would go and basically go over top of this section in here. Although I don't know, maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> but at any rate, I did build this to be the race car and not the street machine. But that would, that would be the street machine with an orange top if you use these decals down below. Here's our car after adding in the trim clad black components. Now I still need to paint the radiator, but I need to do that with a satin black or even a flat black just to make it look different in here. I just saw Pete's video where he did some upgrades on his car and he did get rid of the posts and uh, left that area flat. But what I want to do here is just leave the posts because I'm building this as if you bought it out of the box and you're just trying to get the kit to fit together properly. So that's why I'm leaving mine in, but I will agree with how he did his. The only thing is I would cut a plastic card to shape of here and here, and then something for the inside just to blank out the holes that he left in there. But I think Pete is pretty smart. He'll probably do that in an upcoming video. So I have full confidence there. But look at how nicely this orange turned out. And remember I said that somewhere in the pillar here, you could see the little uh, three vents from the um, plastic getting sunken down or whatever that, uh, that, uh, oop, I lost his name now. Anyway, that uh, the guy was talking about. Well, now that I sanded it in here, you can't even see it. Oh, it's Lucas C. Lucas C was talking about the etching in there. And uh, just with a bit of light sanding, the etching has come out and now it looks nice and smooth. The only issue I have with the paint job is I think I'm going to have to do it twice. Uh, add a second coat of the orange on there because if you look at the reflection here, you can see it's almost like waffle, <laughs> sort of like a waffle. And that's because I painted this way across and then I painted long way. But I, I did sand when I went this way. As you remember, it's still that uh, grapefruit color underneath. This is just the first coat of orange. So I will sand this. I'll let it dry for another day or so. Get that paint nice and set. And then I will thin down my orange and just go this way. But what I wanted to show you was how it looked with the black on there. And again, it's going to be cool to see these graphics in place with that nice orange. Yeah, I am liking this. This is getting better and better as we go along. You can see up underneath, I painted inside those fender aprons. Oh, and uh, I saw that Pete had done a really good job on his windshield washer bottle in here. But then it dawned on me, if you're racing a NASCAR, there is no windshield wiper bottle. In fact, even this, the aprons inside here, would probably be removed in order to lighten up that front end. And what you would have is just fenders suspended over 
sort of a roll cage inside the engine. In the engine bay, I mean to say. But uh, we're not going to get that involved. I mean, I just want to show you guys how to build this kit. How to get it together properly out of the box without going into a full shred it to pieces to build an accurate NASCAR. You know, this is for the new guys starting out that are bought this kit for the first time and maybe new to model building. I just want to get it together for them to show them how to solve all the issues. Because like everybody's saying, I mean, initially I found 23 issues with the kit. Then I found another 23. And it seems like I'm finding another 23. So, you know, that's oh, about 72 or 3 issues with the kit. So let's solve them first. And then we can get into doing a whole new video with a whole new model of this model and detail the living heck out of it and actually accurize everything. But for now, let's get it together. Here's the car in a bit of a mock-up phase. I haven't glued anything together and you'll notice that the body is sort of uh, sloping backward and hanging more on the rear wheels. That'll actually get fixed when I glue the front to the chassis. As you can see, it's just the weight of the body that's causing it to slope downward. Once it gets glued up in the front, it'll pull this all straight and then it'll sit at the proper height that I wanted and have this level with the ground and not sloping back. But you can see that I added orange to the headlight covers up here to go with the theme of the orange roof. I'm almost debating whether or not to paint the cowl and the hood orange just to have a big orange streak go right over, but I don't know, maybe that's not going to work. You can see the uh, John Deere green wheels down below. They look really dark, but they're actually quite bright. Maybe I can manipulate the lamp here. I don't know if that's doing any good for anybody. <laughs> anyway, okay, so they are a kind of mid-dark green, kind of light. But you'll notice that on the decal sheet, right around the wheel opening, you have that dark green just along the bottom, then a darker orange and a light, almost yellowish orange. Now when we put our decals right against there, uh, how well can you see this? There we go. How can I bend it around? You will see the uh, green stripe down here that matches in with the green and keys off of the green of the wheels. So this will look really good once it's all together. Currently though, you could call it a roaring tribute to Ireland because it's the same color as the flag. You got the orange, the white, and the green. Next week on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. After a day or two, I started considering whether or not to sand the top down and repaint another coat on there and make it nice and smooth. In order to apply our decals, I have the following tools. And what we're going to do is submerge the decal in water. Actually, not really submerge it. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. All right, so here we have the car body. And now we'll just move that decal into place. Now we get into my favorite part of the build. And that's the part where there's only a few pieces left. 